Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about Multiverse X and what our models are making of its price action. Before we get into that, just quickly, what is Multiverse X? It is a layer one blockchain. It is a sharded blockchain, which allows for higher parallelization, which basically allows for faster throughput and cheap transaction fees, which are some things that it is known about and also greater scalability. And Multiverse X has also done some interesting things recently. One of the things that they did recently that other chains haven't really done was actually some on-chain two-factor authentication, which is really neat because basically it's a system that allows you to set up your wallet such that a transaction cannot go out of your wallet unless it's both signed by you and by this guardian address, which is basically controlled by a two-factor authentication. And the benefit, of course, is that if someone were to somehow get their hands on your private keys, they can't just immediately drain your wallet. They need to get the Guardian to sign off also. And if they can't get a valid authentication to the Guardian, the Guardian won't do that. So it's a safeguard on your wallet. And with all the stories you hear about people getting their wallets drained, this kind of thing would not surprise me if it catches on more widely. An interesting thing that Multiverse X did. But all the cool fundamentals in the world won't matter too much if the price of the asset can't appreciate. I think for a lot of investors, you're getting in because you think the price of the asset will go up over time. And sometimes fundamentals lead into price action, sometimes they don't. So what I like to do is look at what some of our models are seeing about the price action of an asset to think about where it might go and kind of ignore some of those more speculative or subjective evaluations of fundamentals, which may or may not ever translate into price, and just see what our models are picking up looking at the broader markets. So the first model I wanna talk about here is one of our risk models that we have for Multiverse X. This is our short-term upside downside potential indicator. So short-term, it cares about moves that play over days to weeks, so relatively short in its time horizon. And basically high values mean high risk, low values mean low risk. And what you'll see is that coming into this rally that we had from October, coming out of pretty low short-term risk levels and really eating up a lot of that in this run up here, we then cooled off a good amount down here in December, which then allowed for the continuation of the rally through to the end of December into the beginning of the year. And now you'll notice that the short-term risk for Multiverse X is cooling off notably. We're all the way down, we're actually below where we were back here in early December, getting back down to this general range that we had been in really throughout this whole accumulation phase here before we rallied back up out of that range. And so this might suggest is that in the short term, eGold is accruing some upside. That if it wants to be able to rally, if the broader markets remain bullish and allow it, it would not surprise me for us to find a local bottom at some point. We've been correcting off this rally, find a local bottom, and then chew up some of that short-term upside potential again. If we really are in the early stages of a new bull market where the data really do suggest that we are, then that's the kind of behavior you'd expect. You'd expect corrections, that just happens. But what you'd want to see is a series of higher highs and higher lows. So the idea would be that you're not getting super excited about an asset when it's getting riskier, but in these dips, that might present opportunities. So obviously not financial advice, you should make your own opinions about the market where you think things are going. But a bull market's very different than a bear market. I think a lot of us have PTSD from this bear market where any rally was quickly sold off and then lower lows showed up. In a bull market, you'd be looking for the exact opposite. And so dips can be opportunities, and especially when you see the data supporting that view. So this doesn't mean that Eagle has to find a bottom immediately. A lot of this is gonna be dependent on how Bitcoin reacts to the spot ETF news when that likely comes out sometime this week. That's probably when the broader market will pick a direction. It's possible Eagle would have further to correct. But really what you'd like to see is just a higher low somewhere around here to set up that rally to a higher high. And really the short-term UDP is just gonna be picking up on that. It still has plausible downside to go, but the lower you go, the more asymmetrical things are getting towards the upside would be the idea. We can also see this when we look at the long-term UDPI. So notably here, the long-term UDPI is more elevated right now than the short-term. And that's something that might suggest that we might need some more cooling off or consolidation from a longer-term time horizon before seeing a next mega leg up. Think of these big expansions that we see in bull markets. Now we have been moving down, which is good news. We're down now to about 0.75. So that's a good first start, but really I'd like to see this cool off even more, ideally getting back down into the negatives and that might enable that move up. So in the short term, there could be some move up, but really that more longer term expansion, it would be nice to see some longer either correction or consolidation at current levels. I think it's important to keep 
time frame in mind. We often get overly focused on the short term and what's happening. But if we think in the longer term in terms of a bull market, a full bull market, this is all just going to look like noise if that happens, just noise along the way to higher and higher prices. And so that's where, you know, you can play the short term volatility, but it's important not to lose sight of that bigger picture. And that's why I like to look at these different time frames because the short term UDPI can tell us in the short term is there's some upside that could happen. Then the long term UDPI is really giving us that longer term perspective of where things are maybe standing. We had a first expansion going into a potential early bull market here. We might need to see this cool off more like we've seen in the past before that next expansion can really happen. So there'll be some short term volatility along the way, but that's the broader view that we can think about. And then also talking about the broader view, we can look at our forecast model. So this is another model we have that looks at the medium to long term of an asset. And basically what this is doing is it's looking at the upside probability of upside six months in the future for an asset. So what is the likelihood that the price of eagle will be above where it is right now six months in the future? And we all see is that you have these distinct phases of bull market, bearish bull market. It's kind of this wave that you see. So basically through here, this is bull market saying that it's very likely overall that the price will be above where it was before six months in the future. And that was what ended up happening, bull market. But then as we rally to the all time high for Eagle, you'll actually see the forecast model was falling off a cliff. And in fact, was very low at that time, suggesting that caution was warranted, that there was a pretty low chance that price would be above where it was six months in the future. And indeed, that's what we saw, this big correction. And notably, it was doing that while everyone else was calling for a thousand dollar eagles or higher. And then, of course, we had the bear market, but then it started getting bullish and it really started getting bullish, really ticking up into these high levels, these full on bull market levels right here, right in September, going into October of 2023. And sure enough, that's when we went on our big rally and it remains quite bullish. And so nothing's guaranteed, obviously, you know, currently it's up at about 0.96, so 96% chance of upside in six months from its estimate. Pretty good, not 100%, but way better than, for example, 9% or even lower down here at 4% like it was back over here. And so this is basically just saying is that a bullish disposition on Eagle makes sense right now. That if you had to pick one direction or the other, this model thinks it makes more sense to be bullish than it does to be bearish given current market outlook. So that's something I also like to look at as that broader picture that even though it can be tempting to get really caught up in this short-term volatility and maybe get really worried when you see these corrections or get really euphoric when you see small pumps. Really, when you take the broader picture, it helps to decontextualize and say, all right, maybe I don't matter. It doesn't matter all that much. Maybe it's not that important what happens over the past week or the couple days that really matters is these broader moves. You'd really like to be riding the full wave and you're probably not going to worry too much if you got in all the way down here at the very bottom or here, or even here, or even here, still plenty of room to work with. So obviously now this is financial advice. And as I mentioned before, important caveats are that Bitcoin is probably gonna lead the show for a while yet. And how it reacts to this ETF news is probably going to be pretty important for at least the medium term, short to medium term for where things go. But I do think that as long as the broader, the longer term data still supports a bull narrative that we're in the new bull market, a lot of this shorter term consideration may or may not matter all that much. It's really easy to get caught up in it and really trying to, you know, catch every local top and catch every lo every local bottom. But that's so difficult and so hard to do that oftentimes I find a better perspective, just that long term view. Don't worry, don't sweat the short term too much if the longer term is actually looking pretty nice. So those are just some of the things that I'm seeing looking at Eagle and looking at some of our models. So if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on X. A lot of updates about our models and more over there. And go to our website, plurdigital.io to see live data from our models and more.